In this video, I'm going to talk about intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces, it means the force between molecules. So whenever we have inter, it means between the molecules, like you have two different molecules and there is a force between these two, either attraction or repulsion. But sometimes you may see this word intramolecular forces. Intramolecular forces, it means inside of the molecules that we are not going to talk about intramolecular in this video. Intermolecular forces for attraction called Van der Waals force. So Van der Waals force is intermolecular force for attraction. Van der Waals has three type of force. The first one is dipole dipole. The second one is dispersion force. Or the another name for dispersion force is London force. And the third one is hydrogen bonding. Number one is dipole dipole force. This force is attraction between polar molecules, like for example HCl. We know HCl has polarity. Chlorine has higher electronegativity, so it's negative, partially negative, and hydrogen is partially positive. So one side of molecule is negative and one side of molecule is positive. It's partially charged, but they can have interaction with the opposite charge in another molecule. Like if we have another HCl here, again, this is negative, this is positive. So there will be interaction between these two. If we have another HCl here, this positive and negative charge, they can have attraction. So if we have more polarity or more dipole moment, normally we have a stronger intermolecular forces. If we want to realize our molecule has dipole-dipole interaction or no, we need to find the polarity of our molecules. If our molecule is polar, then yes, we have dipole-dipole force. Otherwise, we don't have dipole-dipole force. But if we have a non-polar molecules, like F2, like Cl2, or Br2, or I2, all of these halogens, they have nonpolar molecules. But if we check the physical property of this compound, we can see fluorine and chlorine are gas. Bromine is liquid and iodine is solid. So what makes difference between this compound that one of them is liquid, one of them is solid, and two of them are gas? Because the physical state of compound is depending to the intermolecular forces. So we don't have any polarity, we cannot have dipole moment. The force is important for nonpolar molecules is dispersion force or London force. So here we have effect of London force. But what is London force or dispersion force? Okay, let's look at this atom. We know in atom, electrons move around of the nucleus constantly. This movement is random. So it means we can have different distribution around of the nucleus of atom. So a lot of times it's happened that one side of atom has more electrons than the other side of atoms. Let's say here, in these atoms, we have different distribution of electrons. Then one side of atom will have partially negative charge and the other side of atom can have partially positive. This phenomenon can happen for atom or for molecules. Then it produces a temporary dipole. This temporary dipole can induce to the neighbors, 
to the other molecule. When we have temporary dipole, then the shape of the electron clouds or the orbitals will be a little different. So in this case, it will be something like this. One side of molecule or atom will be bigger and one side electron clouds or electron distribution will be smaller. So this can induce to the neighbors. So if we have another normal molecules, this negative charge can repelling the electrons to the other side. Then this normal molecule will have a temporary dipole too. Right now we have two temporary dipoles. Then this temporary dipole, they can have attraction between each other. So right now we have a kind of dipole-dipole interaction too, but it is temporary. And because of that, the London force or dispersion force is a lot weaker than dipole-dipole interaction. So dispersion force is for all compounds and molecules. But where is important, it is only for non -polar. So let's come back to that question. Why iodine is solid, bromine is liquid, and chlorine is gas, for example? Because this distribution of electron and formation of temporary dipole is depend to the size of atom. Having bigger atoms or molecules, then there is more chance of having temporary dipole. Because number of electron is increasing, and then there is more chance to having deviation from the normal distribution of electrons. So these molecules, fluorines, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, they are belong to group 7A in periodic table. From top to the bottom, their size and also their mass will increase. So because we have bigger molecule here, then there is more chance to have temporary dipole moment. Then we have a stronger London force for iodine. So iodine will be solid. But boromine has a smaller molecule, then it has weaker London force, then their molecule cannot stay as a solid to they form liquid. And for chlorine and for fluorine, the London force is not very strong to convert this gas to the liquid. Another example for this dispersion force is CH4 group 4 hydride. If we have a diagram for boiling point, for example, we will see CH4 is here, then here is silicon hydride, then germanium hydride, and tin hydride. The boiling point increase when we have the heavier molecules or larger molecule because boiling point is depend to the intermolecular forces too so if you have a stronger intermolecular forces you can have greater boiling point and melting point normally the third intermolecular force is hydrogen bonding Let's start to talk about hydrogen bonding with this example. There is two molecules, nitrosyl, fluoride, and water. I would like to compare these two together. The geometry of these two molecules is same. Here is nitrosyl fluoride. And here is water. Both of them, they have bent geometry. Dipole moment for the nitrosyl fluoride is 1.81 and for water is 1.85. So they have same geometry and almost same dipole moment. But look at to the boiling point. The boiling point for nitrosyl fluoride is negative 72.4 celsius and for water is positive 100 celsius so water is liquid at room temperature and nitrosyl fluoride is gas 
The molar mass or molecular weight for nitrosyl fluoride is 49 AMU and for water is 18 AMU. And this molecule is larger than water. So we have same geometry, almost same polarity or dipole moment. Nitrogel fluoride has heavier mass and it's bigger, but the boiling point for this molecule is a lot lower than water. So this fact we cannot explain by dipole-dipole interaction or by London force. We should have something else. So there should be another type of intermolecular forces that can make a big difference between water and nitrogel fluoride. Here is another example. If we have this diagram for boiling point and the size for the molecule. For group 4 or carbon group, this is the diagram we can see for hydride compound. CH4, then silicon hydride, germanium hydride, and tin hydride. So we expect to have same trend for the group 5, 6, and 7. So here we have pH3, then we have arsenic hydride and antimony hydride. For group 6, here we have hydrogen sulfide. And for group 7, we have HCl here is lower than pH3. Then HBr here and HI here. So we expect to have same trend for the first element, for oxygen on group 6, for nitrogen on group 5, and for fluorine on group 7. But here is the actual boiling point for those compounds. Here is for HF, here is for ammonia, NH3, and here is for water. We cannot explain the boiling point for these three compounds by dispersion force or dipole-dipole force. Because from left to right, we have heavier and larger molecules. Then we should have higher boiling point. So what is the big difference between this three molecule and the rest of the molecule is hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular forces. So we have a higher boiling point for this compound. If we don't have hydrogen bonding for water, the boiling point for water should be negative 80. So it means we cannot have water as a liquid if we don't have hydrogen bonding. So what is hydrogen bonding? When we have bond between hydrogen oxygen, hydrogen nitrogen, and also hydrogen fluorine. These three elements, fluorine, nitrogen, and oxygen, they have a very big electronegativity. So we have a very big negative charge on these atoms. And hydrogen will be positive. In addition of big charge, the size for hydrogen atom is very small, also same for these elements. So we have a very small atoms with a huge amount of charge on them. So this causes a very concentrated charge on hydrogen and these three elements. So then they can have a very strong interaction, electrostatic interaction with each other between different molecules. And this strong electrostatic attraction, we call it hydrogen bonding. Keep in mind, hydrogen bonding is only for these three bonds. So if we have hydrogen attached to the carbon or the other elements, we cannot have hydrogen bonding for that hydrogen. So if we look at to the water, Water has bent structure. This positive hydrogen, they can have hydrogen bonding with another water. So they're going to have interaction 
with the negative oxygen in another molecule. This lone pairs or this negative charge, they can have interaction with another water molecules. So water can have maximum four hydrogen bonding, each molecule of water. And this hydrogen bonding make a network between the molecule of water. It causes a very specific property for water like surface tension, capillary effect, and high boiling point for water. And I'm going to explain the property of liquid and solid in another video. If we have a molecule with more amount of OH or NH in their structure, and of course they will have a stronger hydrogen bonding. Let's look at here. This is a molecule, methanol with the alcohols. And these molecules is ethylene glycol. This one has two OH and this one has one OH. This OH are able to make hydrogen bond with the other molecules. So because we have more number of OH, then the possibility to make hydrogen bonding is higher than the methanol. So we should expect this one has higher boiling point rather than methanol. Thank you for watching this video. To watching more video, please subscribe our YouTube channel.